But let's to get to this uh, judgment on Mikel Arteta because we received yesterday the written reasons behind the, why Mikel Arteta was not punished by an independent commission after the FA charged him with bringing the game into disrepute. Now, this all centred on his comments that he made after the Newcastle game uh, in the beginning of November in which he was upset about a decision that went against his team. And this is what he said. Yeah, we have to talk about the result because you have to talk about how the hell this goal um, stand up and it's incredible. I feel embarrassed, but I have to be the one now coming here to try to defend the club and please ask for help because it's an absolute disgrace that this goal is allowed. It's an absolute disgrace. What, why? Because it's not a goal. For many reasons, it's not a goal. For more than one reason, at least, it's not a goal. And it's too much at stake here. We put so much effort. It's so difficult to compete at this level. And it's an absolute disgrace. Again, I feel embarrassed. I've been more than 20 years in this country. And this is nowhere near the level to describe this as the best league in the world. I am sorry. Uh, so quite inflammatory, or it sounded as sort of like rather a passionate comments from uh, the manager after the game. Um, when it was reviewed, the decision, it was Anthony Gordon's goal. There was what was deemed to be a push by Joel Linton. The re Arteta thought there was a push by Joel Linton at the back post. When it was reviewed by the VAR independent panel, which is the, the decision-making panel every week where they go back, look at the VAR decisions and determine whether or not that the, the, the they've been implemented in the right way, the protocols and the rules, etc. Actually, the panel decided that that goal was right to be given. I don't agree with that. But, but the panel agreed. Just a minute, just a minute. I do not agree with that, OK? So if I was on that panel, I wouldn't have agreed. But you weren't. Joe Linton makes a foul on Gabrielle. OK, okay. end of. OK, and, and, and there was a couple of people it's on that opinion. panel... It's who, opinion. Who, who, ...who thought... Subjective ...who agreed opinion. with your opinion, and there were other people on the panel that didn't, and overall, the majority was that that decision yes. was correct. Okay. But I don't think that panel really represents a, a, a true and honest representation of what the public feel. It's split 50-50, and you're saying two people out of 12 said it was definitely five. a goal. OK. 3-2. It well, was. OK. And at 3-2 for one of the decisions. There's three separate incidents because the ball goes in or out of play and no one knows. That was a unanimous decision that the referee and the uh, uh, VAR did the right thing there by continuing because there's no clear evidence to Webb said it, it looks like it could be out. It, it probably is out, but it wasn't given. But yep. there's no clear obvious. No, uh, but um, there we are because uh, we're using technology that. that is not fit for okay, purpose. But we're arguing okay. about the decision, no, which okay. has already been Correct. sort of looked and over. There, there's a lot of passion involved, it a lot is, of emotion. And, got it. and Arteta, Arteta? Arteta had that emotion. He did. And he explains that. He did. In his and, argument. And, and, and he's been let off, and this is why. You're not happy about that. I am happy about it. I think it's absolutely the right decision. Okay. You've got that completely wrong. You've anticipated and assumed that I was unhappy about it when I wasn't. So why are you happy with it? I'm fine because if you read the report, and I spent last night reading 37 pages of the report. You think you're alone in that? Including the footnotes. I read them this morning. Well, you didn't read the footnotes, did you? Because you got confused when I was talking to you about it just a minute ago. No. You did? No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read the you page didn't read six. That bit. Yes, you didn't know. Uh, but basically, he got off because his KC successfully argued that the words he used in his rant did not breach the threshold of language to be deemed either personally offensive, implicate bias question the integrity or say anything insulting or abusive. And the FA had to accept this mm -hmm. because of precedence in cases with Jose Mourinho, Neymar and Frank Lampard that they'd previously bought, both cited in this case, uh, that criticism of and discussion of match-changing decisions must be allowed as long it was within certain limits. And I think it was. And the reason they took this into consideration was because just a month before... This incident, the Premier League themselves had put their hands up and acknowledged that they too believed that there were flaws and weaknesses in the VR processes. And the way that Arteta spoke, he didn't pick out any individuals, he concentrated on the processes. He didn't speak about an individual, uh, did, uh, individual decision, he talked about outcomes. He doesn't mention any official, it wasn't deemed personal, so that's why he didn't breach a rule. But morally, was it the right decision? Well, I think you're slightly misguided there a little bit because <laughs> because I believe that it was it was all the co around the connotation of the meaning of the word disgracia. So disgracia in in Spanish means something different to what it means in English. In English, it's a disrespectful word to use. Okay, and it's very d damning. Is it? But but in Spain, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. What it, the two What are the two definitions then? 
well, let's just look through then. Connotations in Spanish. So language doesn't... It, it's a misfortune. It's a tragedy. It's it's bad luck. Okay. But, but in an English connotation, it's like it's much more damning. It's uh, it's contempt. It's uh, dishonourable. It's disrespectful. Mm. So I think actually it, it, they feel that it was lost in, in translation and that he used that... You know, he didn't quite know the meaning of the word he was using. But that's not true. Because at the bottom of page six, which you didn't read... Yes, yeah, so- it I know says what you're going to say. This that, Mikel Arteta. There was a miscommunication between Arteta and the manager and, and the club. So, but that's because when he went to the panel, he actually said to the panel that he was not suggesting when he used the word disgrace in the interviews that he had in fact been intending to use the word disgracia or at least the, use a word which carried with it connotations of misfortune, tragedy, or bad luck rather than the connotations of abuse or insult. He actually explained he had intended to use the English word disgrace. He had complete knowledge of the English word disgrace and that any suggestion to the contrary so you're saying in the letter was a result of miscommunication between him and Arsenal who prepared the letter. So actually, and the there, initial and there, letter... And maybe there lies the problem, there, no? It, miscommunication. Not of what the, the whole thing is just... This whole disgrace thing is irrelevant. It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with the fact that the independent panel looked at his words and thought that he didn't stray over the line, the threshold, to be abusive. And I think they're right. Right, so it's got nothing to do with what language it is. It's got to do with the fact. Well, it that does. He they used... do refer to the language, don't they? They do refer to the language. They don't refer Discratia, to that word. Discretion word is re- is used in the argument. Yes, it is. It's used by the club, and basically, what all they've done in the report is is explain that actually that wasn't part of their thinking. What was part of their thinking was the issue that he hadn't intentionally had to go at one individual person. So, do you think he is right to be able to say and go as far as he did? Look, I, I just feel that it would be lovely if we could just draw a, a line under all this, you know. So I, my well, argument, do you think it's my, right that he's he's allowed to talk like well, that? Well, I think that what he's tried to do, he has obviously put con, spent considerable time behind the scenes working with VAR, with working with uh, match officials. Yeah, it's one of the try, things they recognise. To try to actually. to try to improve, and so they've looked at that. They've looked at that good character. They did try to argue, didn't they, that uh, as a role model and it resonates across the world that maybe he should be charged because, you know, this is such a huge figure within the game. Yeah. And then they decided, well, actually, it doesn't really matter, does it? You know, is he is he guilty or not? Forget the size of the character and the, and the personality and how much he transcends around the world. Um, so I think they've fallen on the right side. I think, yes, I think I can see disgrace means something different in Spanish. And I understand that argument. I know that you're trying to pick a hole now through that and try to create... Uh, no, I'm just uh, saying that's irrelevant. You're trying to say that Arsenal actually said one thing and, and Arteta is saying the other. Yeah, but but that's nonetheless, that's what nonetheless happened. let's hope we can just get on with the football now. Hopefully VAR improves. Hopefully the You might want to move arrives. on to the football, but what we need to address is whether or not this is OK to do. I think it's borderline. I think it's absolutely borderline when you're using those types of words. But I do understand... That uh, with the translation and what it might mean, a different connotation, a different language. I'm under, I understand that. Uh, he was hit up. One of the reasons he was hit up because Joe Willock, apparently former Arsenal player, who was part of the the build up to the goal, turned around and told players as they were walking off the pitch, "Yeah, it was out of play." So he he had heightened emotion. He thinks it was out of play. Yeah, we're told we don't really know whether it was out of play. Yeah, but he was the, the closest to it, the ball. wasn't he? He was, but he might be wrong. Well, he might be. He might be wrong. That's the, another I don't know reason if it helps. why it helps. I don't know if it helps. It Maybe it helped his argument on the day. Mm. Um, we don't know, do we, if he actually said that. But one of the key key, key things here going forward is, is, is whether or not you accept that it's OK for a manager to come out and criticise a process like VAR in the aftermath of a game. Now, my, my view for what it's worth is, is I think it's absolutely fine for someone to come out and criticise the processes behind a... Uh, a system like VAR, for example, bearing in mind the number of problems that we've had with it, as long as they're not personal or insulting or damaging the reputation of the referee. Because open communication is really, really important. Talking about it, highlighting the issues, actually sharpens the focus of everybody, doesn't it? Well, of course it does. I mean, we're we're now talking about the protocol now that happens in the VAR room. So the, the, the language, you know, how we restrict what we say, who speaks and when, clear, clear communication. All of these things are about to change, all of it because of what we've been subjected to so far. Yeah. I, I felt that, um, you know, watching that game and looks, doesn't it, to the to the eye as if the ball's out of play. But we'd, to not have the technology is really kind of, it's scary, really. And I just feel now next year, this technology, I'm told now there's going to be these sensors in the ball. 
Mm. You know, it's incredible what the, the te- technology that's going to arrive. And then a lot of these issues they won't completely go away, but a lot of them will go away. Yeah, they'll get better and better at it over time. What I will say is I spent my Monday afternoon this week actually going through with match officials some decisions and there's no doubt they're doing their best to try and sort of improve on the way they communicate and educate themselves. One of the issues I think is is that when you're in a stadium, when you're watching, there's no clear communication from the referee to the wider general public. And I think until that changes, we're always going to have this moment of conjecture. For example, I did a game last night in the Europa League where Rem were disallowed a goal in the 111th minute of stoppage time. The information that was given by the broadcasters, uh, from the broad- to the broadcasters from the VAR room last night was that they were checking the build-up to the goal for a potential offside. The replays were ongoing. When we came back from the replays, they put a caption up this is the UEFA, put a caption up saying that the goal was disallowed for offside. It wasn't disallowed for offside. We didn't see the full replay till afterwards. By that time, they put on the screens in the stadium that the goal was disallowed for offside. So I'm looking at the commentator data feed. I'm looking at TV screens around um, the office. Everything says offside. Everyone watches going mad doesn't understand why it's been offside because no one, I couldn't see any offside. And that's why I said I just couldn't see any offside. It was the correct call in the end because there was a double touch by a free kick taker, freak incident. But instead of communicating, you're not saying, you're not saying you missed that, Sam, are you? No, no, I'm well, saying that they did, didn't did communicate. They, did they replay it though? Did you see it more than once? No. Oh, well, okay, then I can understand. If you saw it more than once, then you probably should have no, seen it. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't have that facility. Sadly, however, what we did have, what we could have had, what we had at the Women's World Cup, is a referee that comes out and says, "This is the decision. This is why I've given it." Instead, we don't have any communication from the referees. So you can't convey that then to your listener, so to no your one, viewer. And, and also, but what about the people in the stadium? Well, they're the worst ones. I think that's totally disrespectful. You go to a, ge- a ground and you're ringing home to find out what, what on earth's going on. Yeah. So we should be broadcasting. The next set of referees that come along surely will have the skill set to be able to communicate decisions in the way they do with rugby. So we can just involve everybody and then we take... Well, we, we can then understand more. It's easier for us to understand, isn't it, when we can hear their workings out. At the moment, we're sort of in a locked room. Someone's thrown the key away and we have to wait. By the way, it took, what was it, four or five minutes to get these three decisions in the Newcastle game that Arteta's talking about. Again, mm. that was far too long. Well, at least he's not going to be banned or fined, uh, so he is going to be able to continue. And slowly but surely, we do uh, make another step in the right direction, hopefully, in terms of working out uh, laws and VAR, etc., etc. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.